Hello everybody, welcome back to another Neptune tutorial. Um, today's lesson is a little bit different to what we usually used to. I'm pretty much done with all our swing controls. So uh, we're going to be doing our own custom features. And in today's uh, tutorial, I'll be teaching you guys how to make this cool looking search bar. And uh, if you don't think it looks cool now, wait till I actually click on it. And uh, basically, just before I get started, this is my project called Project Jarvis. It's a home automation system. I'll post the website uh, in the description so you guys can keep up to date with it. But anyways, we click on this and we've got this nice blue glowing uh, border, I guess. And it gives us a little hint, tells us to search. So uh, I want to see who made this program. So I'm going to type in developers. And I'm too lazy to type it, so I'm going to type it like that. Could hit enter and oh there we go all the developers made by two people myself and my partner Daniel who actually makes these tutorials so anyways uh, that's how it is and I'm pretty sure you can even type in sentences who are the developers enter and oh there we go this is like a, it has like artificial intelligence no it, it actually doesn't but anyways, if you type in something incorrectly, like hello, give us a message, and I'll probably link it up to the web. So if you type in uh, hello and it says no, it'll have an option for you to say, uh, you know, would you like to connect to the web to, to look for this result? You can click yes or no. But anyways, let's get started here. Now, we need two images. We need an image for basically the idle layout and then we need an image for when you actually click on it like that uh, and it changes to the blue blue glowing uh, border so I have here search bar and search bar focus they're the same thing I say they're the same thing and uh, it's not the same thing but it's supposed to be the same thing except this is just supposed to have a uh, blue glow in Photoshop I guess you guys can do that GIMP whatever save it as a PNG and you want to put it into your source folder source folder start menu your documents, NetBeans projects, your project name, and then in the SRC folder, just put in your images. Now, uh, keep in mind that whenever you need to programmatically change images, you want to put in your source code. Whenever you use images that are going to be permanent, permanent, and by permanent, I mean like these icons and stuff that don't disappear or that don't need to be changed. If they do need to be changed, put them in your source folder. This is because the code that I use accesses the images from the source folder. So. Uh, I'm just going to remove everything really quickly and while I'm scrolling through you guys can see how quick the code is. Anyways, and uh, okay anyways, let's get started here. Let's add a label, put it in the center here, just make it really big and you want to drag this label above your background, edit the text, take it all out and uh, change the variable name to search bar. And now we're going to add an image, right click, properties and look for icon and you want to click this down arrow. Now uh, before you you choose your normal default idle image you actually want to choose the focused image or the the more flamboyant image and this is because sometimes uh, people tend to make the, the label fit the image exactly like this and what happens is because of this glow it actually looks cut out and looks really badly done unless that's the look you're going for uh, no offense but uh, okay so that looks that looks good to me let's just move it in the corner now let's change our uh, image back to a normal search bar now make sure both these images are made at the same size I think this was 250 pixels by 70 or something uh, to cater for the glow but anyways that's that now let's add a text field because keep in mind that um, images cannot hold text and let's move this up I'm just trying to position it now this might happen to you guys but it's not a problem to actually fix uh, but I'll show you guys how to do that now go to the properties let's change our text style to Ubuntu light I'm just giving a second guy okay Ubuntu light uh, size 14 is good okay so there we go now we're gonna scroll down look for the border remove the border uh, change enabled to don't enable this and I'll show you guys why in a second change opaque and there we go it's gone it's not gone but 
it's just hidden. Oh yeah, and uh, if you want to make it more precise, scroll all the way down and use these layout tabs. You can change the width by like single pixel, so you get much more uh, accurate results. And also while we're here, let's, let's make the text appear in the center. Horizontal alignment, change from leading to center. And now let's run our program. And here we go. Uh, you can see we can't type in there yet because we didn't enable it. And there's a reason why we didn't enable it. Because usually when you start up your program, it uh, it automatically goes in here. It's like even if you click on the background, you can still type in there, which is, which is really annoying because then you can't see the the nice glowing background that you guys worked on, um, or that you downloaded off the internet. So, anyways, okay, so that's all set up. Now, as soon as we click this label, we want all this stuff to change. We wanted to show a hint. We wanted to change the background, all of that stuff. So, right click on this, events, mouse, mouse clicked. Now we get in here in our code. Now we're gonna basically make this thing enabled first, and I didn't actually rename this, so let's change the variable name to search. I'm trying to keep the variable names as short as possible, so it's really quick to type. Search dot set enabled, and uh, set enabled true. So now it's enabled, and let's give us a hint. Search dot set text. Uh, let's give us a hint of the word search. There we go. Now, uh, let me just. Okay, now that that's done, let's change our image. Now I'm just going to scroll up. I use this code so often that I haven't taken the time to memorize it. And uh, just make sure you copy this. Maybe put it in a text file or something. But anyways, we're going to change this variable name to search bar, which is basically the the label that we want to change. And this is the image that we wanted to change to. Now I named this image search bar focused. So I'm going to type in search bar focused. Compile build, run. And okay, as soon as we click on it, there we go. And I didn't actually change the text color. So let's do that really quickly. Design, right click, properties, foreground. Okay, that's done. Okay. Well, okay, so now that's, that's everything is done. We want to change it back, and I chose debug mode. But basically, when we click on this, we want to change it. Um, we want to change it back when we click on the, the background. We don't want to keep it glowing. So let's click on our background. Select our background. Right click, events, mouse, mouse click. Now basically, we're going to take this same thing and then copy it. And then change like one word. So instead of being search, we're going to change it to nothing. We're going to change it to false. And we're going to change search bar focus to search bar. And basically, as soon as we click the background, it's not enabled anymore. The text, what, whatever text was in there, now disappears. And our image gets changed back to the default idling image. So click on there, click back, and type in something random. Disappears. Okay, so now that's that's done, we're gonna add code um, when you click on enter when you when you press the enter button. So right click on this, go to events, and just keep in mind that there's so many options here. If you want to, like you know, you got key press, release, key type, mouse drag, you got all these different stuff. So if you if you're looking for something different, it's all here for you guys. So key, key press. Okay. Now we have key event EVT. It's not used currently, but take note of that. Uh, if you're using an older NetBeans, you might see it says key event E or something random. But so let's add an if statement. And that's how I type my semicolons. It just looks much better. So you're gonna type in EVT or whatever your variable name is. Dot uh, get key code, and it's already there. Equals equals key event dot uh, VK underscore and you can see we have a whole list of stuff these are all the the buttons on your keyboard and like 800 more but it's all right there and we're looking for enter there we go done so whenever you click the enter button when you are in the search uh, dialog it'll search for stuff now basically I'm not going to enable this um, icon on the right hand side it's exactly the same code except the only difference is that you won't be using this if statement here, the one that we just typed. 
So, you know, there's no point in me doing that. So obviously, you guys need some homework. Um, okay, so once that's, uh, once that's done, we are going to add the code to search for stuff. So we're going to add a string search equals uh, search dot get text. I'm actually going to rename this variable because it might be difficult to follow. So I'm going to name it string get text. Will that even work? Okay, get text like that. Now we're going to add another if statement. Open close brackets, and now we're going to use a uh, a function that's very similar to dot equals. Um, and instead of using dot equals, because basically when you are typing a, uh, something to search for, you won't know exactly what it's called. Like uh, maybe. I, in my code I named my developer page developers and someone typed in developer and if you use dot equals to it won't actually work so we're going to use dot matches so let's use dot get uh, sorry get text dot matches open close brackets now we're going to add these uh, double colon whatever you want to call it at a full stop star and now we're going to type in what we want it to match I want to match developer or dev dot star afterwards and that basically ends it and make sure it's all in lowercase or uppercase and I'll show you guys why in a second now once you've got that done you're gonna open up your new GUI or your new, te new text or whatever it is I'm gonna open up my developer page new developer GUI uh, no wait developer info GUI dot set visible true that's basically how you open up a new a new window in NetBeans and this is what our developer info GUI looks like I built it in my own time anyways that's all done, compile, build, run, click on our search box, now let's type in dev, click on enter and there's our developer information. And the nice thing about it is that you can even type in who is the developers or who are the developers who are English and it still works because it's searching the entire string or the entire sentence for the, for the letters DEV. So it, it looks like it has artificial intelligence. But it doesn't, it's actually like the lowest level of code you can use for this. Now what you'll notice is that as soon as you search for dev, that even works. Um, and you go back to click it, maybe you want to look for the help. So you click it and it gives us the hint again. And I'll show you guys how to sort that out right at the end of the video. So once that's done, obviously you can add a lot more. You can add another, another if, I'm just going to do this really quickly off camera. Okay, so I added the exact same code, but I just changed some stuff to look for version of the uh, VER. Internet opens up the version page, and uh, it's, it's as simple as that. You can see I just added the same thing, just changed whatever text is in there, and I changed which window I wanted to be open. So anyways, okay, that's how you do that. Now, the only thing left is to add a... Uh, Thing to tell you when it's not found. That's really basic. That's uh, basic if statements, you know. And you can also add something to check if if someone types in nothing, well, if they don't input anything, and they try typing search or they try pressing search search button, uh, it'll say error. Your computer will blow up in three seconds, and you can have a countdown. And uh, you guys can do that. Obviously, it's completely acceptable. Um, no, that's completely up to you. But anyways, we want to get rid of this stupid thing that keeps telling us search. We type in something, click on it again, and the search pops up. I'm going to do this off camera again because uh, it's just much quicker and saves a bit of time on the video. So I'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, I'm back and I fixed the problem. Basically, type in dev, get my stuff, and when I click on it again, it doesn't change the text. Really simple code. I'll show you guys how I did it. Um, scroll over to top. Okay, there we go. I've initialized a variable called count search and I haven't um, assigned a value to it. Basically by default it's zero. But if I say equals to zero, it'll permanently be zero and I won't be able to change the value of it. And I need to do that, so handy little tip. If we scroll down a bit. Okay, so okay here we go. By default, like I said, it's zero. So if count search is equal to zero, and in this case it is, we just started up a program. And uh, we click on the, the search box and it checks if our count search is equal to zero. Yes, it is. 
sets it to true, uh, puts our hint up there, changes our our image, and then changes the count search to one. Now, if we click on our background and the, the count search is set to one, it'll run all this code and it'll set the count search back to zero. And basically, it's like a it's like a loop that switches between the two. But what happens is when you click on count search um, and it's equal to zero, it runs this code once and then it automatically changes it to to, uh, to one. Now when you click on the text field again, it's not going to rerun the same code because count search is now one and it's not zero anymore. So it's going to run this else code and the else code has nothing in it. So basically nothing is going to happen. So that's basically how it works. And I use it all over the place, like even right here, count equals equals one. I use it everywhere. It's a really handy piece of code. But anyways, uh, you guys can add like a, a thing to tell you your PC will blow up if you type in the wrong thing. Um, you know, you can have various different things. Uh, it's a really nice feature to make your program look much more professional. And if you guys have any suggestions, maybe your own custom uh, features that you, you have in mind, uh, you know, leave us a comment, send us a message. We'll be more than happy to try it out. I've been working on a database that will be up really soon. In fact, probably this week. So uh, stay tuned for that. Subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.